Mani Na Pudni. Welcome to Church Online, recorded on Ghana land. Special welcome to Aldinga Uniting and Woodner Uniting with us. My name is Lynn. I'm the Minister at Adelaide West and bring you this service together with people from the Adelaide West community. We light a candle. Remembering that God is at work in the world and in our lives. Last week we held our community fair at Adelaide West. It was a great day of connecting and fun. Thank you to those who were able to come and also to those who served on stalls, baked or grew plants or helped in any way. On Friday, around 80 people gathered at Uniting College just across here, around a fire, to lament the referendum story. It was a special time to be together, to reflect, pray and share. We affirm the covenant between UAICC and the Uniting Church in South Australia. And we finished with communion together. And we continue our journey of reconciliation. Friday the 27th was World Teachers Day. Thanks to all the teachers, educators and support staff. Your care in ministry in schools, kindies, ELCs, TAFE, universities, colleges and everywhere else is appreciated. In our community life, Jasmine Ferguson married Bailey Hall a few weeks ago. Jasmine has sung for us on Church Online. Congratulations. And congratulations to Liz Ferguson, her cousin. Liz was awarded her doctorate and also in the photo is baby Lily, loved granddaughter of Ferg and Andrea. And Ferg regularly sings for Church Online. Today we're launching the second episode of our new podcast, Open Ended, where we wrestle with the big issues of faith that don't always have clear answers. In this episode, we're discussing what happens in communion. You can find it on the Adelaide West YouTube channel and Spotify. And we'd love to hear what you think. We worship together. Sing praise and thanksgiving. Oh, praise to the Almighty. Sing praise to our God. The reading today is 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 1 to 12. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi. As you know, with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or impure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. You know we never use flattery, 
nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We are not, we're not looking for praise from people, not from you or anyone else, even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We worked night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preached the gospel of God to you. You are our witnesses, and so is God. Oh, how holy, righteous, and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. When we have five Sundays in a month, we have Sharing Sunday, where we hear people share about where they see God at work, in their lives, in the world. It's so encouraging to hear people's stories. In the passage we've just heard, Paul is writing to a church he planted and then had to leave suddenly. And so he writes this letter to encourage them in their faith, teaching them and sharing stories. We hear about the obedience of Paul, even after being treated in a humiliating manner. He defends himself by saying that he isn't seeking glory for his own works, but he gives glory to God. The gospel work is to please God, not to please the people. He writes of great love for them. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. We loved you so much, so we shared the gospel with you and our lives. We see God at work through Paul's faith and the way that he loves the Christians in Thessalonica. In the way he encourages them, because they, they are words of encouragement as well for us. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children encouraging, comforting, and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we are not alone in our faith. God provides us with people to journey with, just as Paul loved as a loving father who encouraged, comforted, and urged them to live lives worthy of God. So we have people in our lives, in the church, both in person and online to journey with, to encourage us when we need encouragement, to comfort when we need comfort, and to urge us to live our lives worthy of God, encouraging us to live with integrity, in a, to live in a way that shows God's love, shows that our lives are being transformed by God's love, helping us to respond to God's astonishing grace and love, helping us to love with God's love and to encourage others in their journeys. We see God at work together. We're going to hear from Linton Wilcox. Linton generally attends the 11 a.m. service and has shared a message and read Bible readings on Church Online. Before coming to Adelaide West, I knew him as an engineer serving his church in property stuff. When I arrived here, Linton had started a new journey while still serving on the sound desk and leading our kids in kids space and other ministry areas. But since then, he's had quite a journey. And so instead of a couple of people sharing for a few minutes, Linton will share some of this journey, which is a big story. I hope it encourages each of us and inspires us in our own journeys to ask the question, where do we see God at work? God is at work in all our circumstances, conversations, struggles, in our serving, the kindness of others, answers to prayer and in our togetherness. God is at work in our lives and in the world.
almost two years ago, exactly to this day, I stood here and shared the story of my beginnings to becoming a hospital chaplain. I'll just give a brief summary. With little warning, in May of 2016, I was made redundant from a senior engineering role that I loved. I was good at it, and I thought it would be my job until retirement. I was comfortable, content, and the redundancy came as a complete surprise. It hurt me deeply. There are many negative feelings I associate with that time, when life as it once was had seemed good, stable, ongoing, even indeed blessed by God, it was suddenly no longer, and the future anything but certain. I guess for others it might be a major family crisis, a critical or terminal illness, a serious accident, natural disaster, or even a global pandemic. For a while, I was at a loss to understand who I was and what to do about it, but I did know I was loved and that people were praying for me. Through this life-changing event, I came to see God was at work for my good, and I became grateful for that redundancy, and it is in fact growing. I sense God saying to me that this was an opportunity for a new beginning. It allowed, in fact, encouraged me to investigate unusual, even radical alternatives. And this ultimately led to my undertaking a unit of clinical pastoral education, or CPE, at the Ashford Hospital during the first part of 2021, under the supervision of Reverend Liz Dyson, well known to many of you. And this included 20 weeks of one day per week placement in the hospital as a volunteer pastoral care visitor. It was a thoroughly positive experience. I encountered the joy and privilege of facilitating and providing meaningful pastoral and spiritual care within a hospital setting. I warmed to being present with the people I met and in being able to offer them companionship, compassionate care, active listening support and comfort for them in their health journeys. So two years ago, <laughs> has it really been that long? At that time I last shared, thanks to that unit of CPE, I was actually providing paid coverage for a short-term chaplaincy vacancy at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. And that commenced in July of 2021 and eventually continued right through to the end of that year, a period of six months. Well, what's happened in the last two years? Well, early in 2022, I did five months of one day a week with Lutheran Disability Services as their sole chaplain to staff and clients. But there wasn't a happy end to that when the initial contract was not renewed. But there has been a link to that with this Shout for Joy service that we now have. So not all bad, in fact, plenty of good. In February and March of 2022, I was asked to do two months at two days a week at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and that was mostly in the mental health wards. In July of 2022, there were two weeks I was asked to cover for three hospitals, the Memorial, Ashford and Flinders Private, all part of the ACH group. And from that, in September and October of 2022, two months at the Memorial Hospital as the sole chaplain, covering while a new hire became available. In November of 2022 through to February of 2023, I spent four months at both the Calvary Adelaide and Calvary North Adelaide hospitals doing two to three days a week. And from March to the end of June 2023, four months again at the Royal Adelaide Hospital providing supply. All but the LDS role were hospital chaplaincy jobs. They were all set in fixed terms and they were casual in nature. And with the exception of the Calvary positions, all the hospital roles were through the Uniting Church. And now of July 2023, I've been made permanent part-time in the Royal Adelaide role. And this has involved a specific commissioning by the moderator, no less. And you can read all about that in the latest edition of New Times. That I'm standing here today, commissioned by our Uniting Church into the role of a chaplain and given this title of pastor, 
is somewhat of a surprise and I'm still humbled to accept it. I conclude this must be of God's doing. How else could it be so? But let's, let's just go back. From the very early on, there was questions raised with me. Should I actually do a period of discernment? I might abbreviate that to POD. For several reasons, but mostly because I did not sense a call to congregational ministry, which is the more usual reason for doing a POD, it took me well over a year to decide a POD was in fact appropriate. And with that, I formulated it around testing this call to chaplaincy and the serving of God outside the physical church through ministry to those at the margins. I thought at the time that was with the sick and dying in hospital, but also I was involved in prisons and working with those impacted by incarceration. So I formally undertook the POD through the second half of 2022, and that concluded in May of this year. It was very worthwhile and a positive experience, and I can highly recommend it. Well, has this POD enabled a testing for the call to chaplaincy? To be honest, for much of the POD, it felt obvious to me that the answer was a clear yes, and I longed for others to see and affirm that. However, I was also aware of the temptation of simply proving a preconception and seeming to rush others, given that this journey had commenced in me well before the POD process. The value of the POD has been to allow time to reflect, undertake some targeted studies, obtain further experiences, and to share more widely and deeply with like-minded people especially key people within the Synod, the Presbytery and across the road at the College. In amongst all that has been the reality that chaplaincy and hospital chaplaincy in particular has kept coming my way, an example being the unsolicited offer to join the pastoral care team at Calvary in a casual capacity that was made on my very last day at Memorial and another being the call from Synod personnel in mid-January asking me to consider returning to the Royal Adelaide role for March. Indeed, when I, asked, when I was asked if I could summarise my discernment into a single statement or picture, I remember looking at my desk and seeing these five hospital ID badges sitting there. It is this ongoing call that allows me to confidently discern the answer is yes to chaplaincy. And to this end, I have contended the POD clearly confirmed that call and the church hierarchy agree, for which I do give thanks and praise to God. I know I'm in the right place, and that does give me confidence and peace when the days are rough and the compassion tank seems to have gone empty or completely exhausted. Has it all been plain sailing since? Well, yes, some days are. When you connect with someone who is vulnerable in a deep and special way and God's presence is tangible, it is exhilarating. But there are plenty of hard cases and difficult days for a variety of reasons and imposter syndrome insecurity doubts creep in. Finding balance, recharging oneself and ongoing sustainability are my current challenges. But I have a supportive faith a church community behind me, and a good team at the hospital, and a great God. I remind myself of the Emmaus Road in Luke 24. This is the biblical metaphor. And the servant song as well, which is the song that combined to inspire and inform my identity and practice as a chaplain. Sharing a journey, walking alongside, seeking understanding together, sitting in common uncertainty and patiently bearing confusion, joys and sorrows, fears and relief, and just being a servant. I'd like to finish with a blessing that was made at my commissioning, and I offer that as a blessing to you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is inevitable. In the face of all that confronts us, in the face of our own fears and limitations, we are still the people of courage and freedom, of vision and responsibility. Let us go into another day, 
carrying around us the stories of hope and the power of a loving God who makes all things new. The world waits for people who will carry it forward into a new day. So walk in love into a harsh world and transform tomorrow. This is our, this is my commission. And may our future rest with the God of eternity. The hours be lived with Jesus Christ and the moments be carried onwards in the life of the Spirit. Thank you and Amen. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for your abundant and gracious love, your astonishing grace, grace we cannot truly comprehend. Thank you that you are at work in our lives, in all our circumstances and in the world. Thank you for the encouragement of sharing stories, stories of you at work in our lives. We're sorry for those times that we do things Think things, say things that separate us from you or us from others. We thank you that these things and all our sins are forgiven. 
Help us to share that story. Help us to encourage others in their faith, to be a comfort and to see you at work, even in this coming week, and to share the stories of where we see you at work. We lift before you a world deeply in need of love and care. We pray for the most vulnerable people around the world, for the people of the Gaza Strip, Ukraine, Syria, Yemen and Ethiopia living under the shadow of war. Lord God, we pray for peace. For all those who have fled their homes seeking sanctuary, we pray for protection and comfort. We bring before you all those living under the threat of debt, poverty, climate destruction and violence. And we pray that they may experience justice within their lifetimes. We pray for all those in need in our own society, those without homes, people experiencing bereavement, people who are marginalised and discriminated against, and for everyone who feels as though they cannot cope. Bring comfort and rest where there is none and guide them to sources of help. We pray for ongoing reconciliation with our First Nations. Pray for comfort for them at this time. And for when they feel vulnerable in their everyday lives, be with them. Pray for strength. They will know that they are loved. Lead us and guide us to know how we can best support at this time. We thank you for the many gifts that teachers and all those who work at schools bring to our school communities and we ask your blessing on them. Thank you for the ways in which they listen and guide. Refresh and renew the spirits of all of them who give so generously. May they continue to inspire. And finally, we pray for those closest to us. We lift them to you. Lord of all compassion and love, surround each person we've lifted with your grace and peace. May they experience healing and transformation in their lives. And most of all, know how much they are loved by you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we might carry your love and light out into the world. We pray our prayers, those spoken, those in our hearts, together in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today. We hope it's been an encouragement to you. We continue to give our offerings to God, financial and practical, and pray that they'll be used to share the good news of God's love. If you would like prayer or pastoral care, please reach out to us by text or email. We would love to pray with you. This week, look for God at work, in your life and in the world, and walk in love into a harsh world and transform tomorrow. May the grace and the kindness of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love and presence of God, the friendship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always as you seek to follow and serve our great God. Amen. Blessings on your week. The lips. tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, the teeth and lips. Yes. <coughs> We're not seeing anything fast enough to need that. No. <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why we chose solutions. Alrighty. Great. This is astonishing grace. Take seventeen. <laughs>